Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. So today, we're going to discuss the what's next on Terrell Gachet, former world title challenger, coming off uh, a pretty big win on March 13th on Showtime that put him back in the top 10 for me um, at 154 pounds, super welterweight. You know, he was coming off with disappointing loss to Erickson Lubin in, um, I believe it was September of last year or October, um, for the number one contendership and where I just felt like he didn't really even try in that fight to win. You know, Lubin's a really good boxer, so let's not take anything away from Lubin, but I really felt like Gache, excuse me, could have put his foot on the gas pedal and maybe uh, made the fight closer you know, in a big fight like that, big opportunity, and he just uh, laid an egg for me. So, you know, heading into this fight with Jamonte Clark, Gache was the favorite, but he was coming off that loss, and Clark, you know, Clark had went um, went the distance with Jason Rosario um, and fought to a draw with the undefeated Sebastian Fundora. So, you know, add a little, add a little to his resume there to see if he might be able to pull it off. But... Gache caught him in the second round, hurt him badly, put him down, and then finished him off. And I was just very surprised by Gache's performance. It was a very impressive performance to finish off um, uh, Jamonte Clark in only two rounds. Gache has never really proven to be a big time power puncher, you know, so to catch Clark and put him away like that was impressive. And he kind of stole the show, um, you know, for that card. And to me, that puts him right back in the top 10, um, you know, because he was kind of floating around towards the back of it anyways, and um, now he's probably back in. So let's run through the top 10 and see what's next for Terrell Gache after that win over Jamonte Clark. Um, we start with number one, Jermel Charlo, the unified champ. He's not going to get Charlo next. Charlo's got bigger things that he's looking at like Brian Castaño. Number two is the undefeated WBO champion, Brian Castaño. He's not going to get him. Castaño is looking at a fight with um, with Charlo or something bigger than Gache. Number three would be former unified champion Jared Hurd. Now, this one is an interesting matchup right here. I think it's a fight both guys would accept. Hurd hasn't been able to pull any of the top guys in the ring um, at 154. And he's trying to move back up the rankings. Gache might provide as a good final eliminator type opponent for Hurd if he's legitimately trying to compete at 154 pounds still. So I think this one is possible right here. Number four is the uh, regular champion, WBA regular champion, Arislandi Lara, um, which will be a rematch from a fight where Lara completely outboxed Gache and took a decision. I don't see this fight happening, any chance of it. Um, a rematch there, especially with Lara moving up to 160, but even if he wasn't, um, I don't, you know, the fight wouldn't make any sense. Lara cleanly outboxed and, and dominated uh, Gache the first time they fought, so no point in this one. Uh, number five is, um, I believe it is Jason Rosario. I think I have, I have at number five right now. Um, you know, not a bad matchup right there, if Rosario would be into it, I'm not sure he'd be into facing a tricky type boxer like Gache next, coming off that loss last year to Jermel Charlo. So I'm going to lean towards a no, but I wouldn't completely rule it out because it's a PBC fight, easy to make. Okay, so one, uh, number six now, is Julian J-Rock Williams. Um, another one, I don't think J-Rock coming off the knockout loss um, in what, January of last year to Rosario, I don't think he'd want to face off against a guy like Gache right out the gate, so I'm going to lean towards a no. Um, then number seven, I believe, is Tony Harrison, the former WBC champion. Another guy that I don't think out the gate coming off a knockout loss to Charlo in December of 2019, his last fight, I don't think he'd want to face somebody like Gache right away. Number eight would be a rematch with Erickson Lubin. Lubin's already the WBC's mandatory number one contender. There'd be no point. The first fight was kind of boring, dull. He got a clean win, so wouldn't be a point in this, so no. And then number nine, floating around the top ten right there, is the undefeated Sebastian Fundora. 
which I think this is another good possibility. Fondora is returning to action in, on May 1st, and um, if he's successful there against Jorge Cota, it might not be a bad choice for Fondora to go after um, Gache if he can't get a top-level uh, opponent or fighter, which is going to be tough for Fondora because Fondora is so big. I think he's going to be avoided. He's so tall and unorthodox and lengthy that I think he's going to be avoided. So I think a guy like Gache would be a good opponent because Gache struggles to find opponents too. So, you know, there are PBC fights out here. Like I said, Jarrett Hurd, Sebastian Fondora make a lot of sense for Gache. He's just got to wait around and see and try to jump at whatever opportunity he gets. But he got a nice win and kept himself in the mix with that knockout of, Jam of Jamonte Clark. All right, guys, so that's what's next on Terrell Gachet. I hope you enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.